Well, the professional performance from Celtic, I think it'll be 2-0. 2-0 to Celtic? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, Celtic will just be a wee bit too strong. The players being brought in, Fernandes and Hearts and up front, I still think they're a hand, handful. Without uh, Patalina, I think it's 2-1 Celtic. 2-1 Celtic, says Murdoch McLeod. And, uh, oh, so you can pick the man of the match. Uh, he said that it could be Fernandes and, and uh, Hearts and for Celtic, maybe, we never know. Just uh, as usual, call 0900 10 225. You can win a PlayStation or a signed shirt. And the lines close tonight at 20 past nine. Just to let you know who won the Man of the Match competition on Sunday in our match. Uh, Laura Grieve from Montrose wins the PlayStation 2 and uh, Janice Campbell from Carden Den and Fife, you win the signed top. Okay, okay. There you are. You say we don't tell you? Of course we do. Time to hand over to Easter Road now. This is the um, 256th time that Hibernian have met Celtic. Celtic have won 161 times, Hibs only 53. How it's gonna, how's it going to happen tonight? Let's find out from Rob McLean and Sandy Clark. I wasn't sure if that was Stato or Dougie Vipon they are handing over, um, but uh, certainly three games in nine days could uh, point Celtic towards a happy new year. In reverse order, the defeat of Celta Vigo would keep Celtic in Europe beyond Christmas for the first time in nearly a quarter of a century, as Chris Sutton takes a seat beside Chick. He's not fuzzy where he sits, obviously. Uh, a win at Ibrox on Saturday could launch them on their way to a, a title hat-trick but uh, no one at Celtic is looking beyond tonight at Easter Road with the two-horse race for the championship still neck and neck with Rangers. And uh, don't forget Hibs, who were bottom of the Premier League in September, would go third tonight if they can beat Celtic. Let's have a look at the sides. No Mixu Patalainen for Hibs. Illness rules out the on-form striker, as Bobby Williamson told us. His place in the team is taken by Derek Townsley. Skipper Ian Murray does play. He's recovered from injury to take his place in central midfield. And striker Tam McManus has scored three goals in the last four games. It's a normal system for Hibs tonight, 3-5-2. What a responsibility on Tom McManus tonight. He'll be the main goal threat. But in the midfield area, Neil Liss and Murray, it's so important they do well. If they don't, do well tonight, if they're overrun, then Hibs are in for a hard 90 minutes. The Celtic team looks uh, more than a trifle bare without the dynamic duo of Henrik Larsson and Chris Sutton. Larsson ill, Sutton injured. David Fernandez starts for only the sixth time. Steve Guppy on the bench to kick off with. Craney and a gap drop out of the starting lineup and returns from Momo Sila. And the former Hibs defender Ulrich Larsson. It's still a very strong Celtic team when you look at it. Salah and Thompson so important, getting wide, getting forward, getting the balls in the box. I'm looking forward to seeing David Fernandes tonight, just to see exactly where he'll play. He normally plays the attacking midfield role. Tonight, will he play as an out-and-out -out striker, or will he drop off and cause his problems? And these are the substitutes. Grant Brebner is among the subs for Hibs. He's back after suspension. And uh, among the Celtic replacements Steve Guppy you would imagine being rested with uh, the old firm match on Saturday in mind he's been a key player he's been a first pick recently for Martin O'Neill so Chris Sutton a spectator and we'll hopefully hear from him shortly once the game gets underway <laughs> And in the foreground there, John Hartson leading the attack with uh, David Fernandez. The first time those two have teamed up together as a Celtic strike force. But uh, a lot of quality in the Celtic side, despite the absentees. And that familiar trio in the central midfield behind David uh, Fernandez, Lennon, Lambert, Petrov. And Fernandez looking for just his second Celtic goal, but he's had precious few opportunities to shine. He's uh, started only five matches prior to this. Mike McCurry is the ref. With uh, Paul Lambert skippering Celtic. And uh, John O'Neill winning the skipper's armband for Hibs. Don't pick your nose when we're on you, Tam McManus. <laughs> yeah, he's been in good form and uh, a mix of Patalain and lookalike with the hair dye and the Neil Lennon type hair dye having been applied and Lennon always tends to stand out and he's looking to boss this game in midfield with his partner in crime Paul Lambert alongside him and uh, he's been left out in recent big games and he will feel 
Sandy that he's got a point to prove. He will, he's a very good player, and I've listened to one or two interviews from, from Paul recently, he's accepting the situation, exceptionally well. He's not as young as he used to be, obviously, in football in terms, but he's a great player to have in your squad, and he certainly won't let anybody down tonight or at the weekend if he has to play in that big game. And his thoughts might just be drifting towards Switzerland, Martin O'Neill, because uh, he'll find out shortly what his punishment, if any, is to be as a result of being ordered out of the technical area during the Celta Vigo match. But for the moment, that's on the back burner. And this is very much what he is concentrating 100% upon. The old firm game three days away, but big matches as far as the title race is concerned at Easter Road and at Ibrox. Rangers against Livingston, Hibs against Celtic. Hibs under strength. And Momo Sila making a good run right from the start. Getting in behind the Hibs defence, but uh, failing to find the, the final ball. And it's uh, quite an interesting little confrontation between uh, Momo Sila and Didier Agat as to who plays in that right wing back position. It's healthy competition between the two and the two those, but that's a good start from Celtic. Useful Haran taking the initiative going forward there and playing Sala and almost beyond the defenders. The only thing that went wrong was the, the final ball into the box. Tech marking job there from uh, Yannick Zambernardi on David Fernandez, Frenchman against Spaniard. Fernandez gets the better of him here. Over elaborate Fernandez, but Hibbs making a meal of getting the ball away. Finally, it was Zambernardi who drove it out of the penalty box. It's good footwork again from Sila. He started very well, and that's offside against John Hartson. Certainly. Good service in the opening minute and a half from uh, former St Johnston player Silla. It's a better ball in, John Harson's about 18 inches offside at the most, it's a good ball in, but with what it may if I was Bobby Williamson was the amount of space that Harson had clear inside the, the Hibs box here. John O'Neill and movement up ahead of him from Derek Townsley. Very adaptable Tangley, he's played in defence, he's played in midfield, and here he is up front, trying to fill the boots of Mixu Patalainen, although that's a, a fatal challenge. Patalainen's been in top form recently, he's a big personality, as was Ulrich Larsson in his time at Easter Road. Larsson played 66 games for Hibs before heading along the M8, although he still stays in the Portobello area. Gary Smith with the angle ball towards the edge of the box and uh, Sila played it off Craig James and there was an offside flag as well uh, 29th game in charge for Bobby Williamson 20 this season, 9 at the tail end of last 114 lost 12 uh, just a couple of draws thrown in as well. The Bobby Williamson roller coaster ride it's been this season. Hartson's head. In goes Fernandez. That's well defended by Zambernardi. And a free kick given his way for the nudge by Fernandez. Former Trois player. Zambernardi, and uh, I seem to remember he was a, one of your man of the matches earlier on the season. I've seen him play quite a few times this season, he's a very, very good defender. And what uh, really impresses me is he's, he's got a magnificent left foot. John Hartson won the, the header there. You can see David Fernandez just tugging at Zambernardi's shirt. Nice little touch from John O'Neill, gets it back from Tansley. Chance to create something for Hibbs. But the cross wasn't a great problem for Paul Lambert. Hibbs trying to keep the pressure on with Orman. And that's too close to Rav Douglas. Good opportunities there for Hibbs to try to hurt Celtic. But uh, neither delivery from uh, Neil or from Orman was a big problem. The Boo Boys having their say to Ulrich Larsson. 
That's Finnick. And Jakovic. Last touch off Townsley. Big Bobo in charge. Still developing as a player. Paul Elliott was speaking about that in the studio pre match. And uh, a lot of raw talent about Valdi. Just for Harren. For Lambert. Over the top for Silla. That's a great ball in for Fernandez. And it's Petrov now. And San Bernardi with the challenge. Danger not over. It's tucked behind. And it's a goal kick, despite Petrov's plea for a corner. It's good play from Celtic, Paul Lambert, it's a fine ball down the right-hand side, Momo Silla, a decent delivery again, Fernandez almost getting there, but good back-up play from Stylian Petrov, he's always there or thereabouts, fighting hard to win the ball inside the box here, and it's a little bit unfortunate there, but the ball just rolled over the line before he tried to play it in. Well, there was good defending there from Zambinardi, but there was also a terrific challenge from Paul Fennick as the ball was played into the box from the right-hand side. He had to get there, he was determined, he did, and that was uh, good defending from the Canadian international. But uh, possible trouble for Hibbs had the whistle not going for a free kick because it looked for a split second there as if Fernandez might be in. It's Fernandez and Zambinardi again, you can see they're just actually tugging at each other, there's not too much in that one. David Fernandez for me, just a little bit unlucky there. Some Bernard did certainly had a grip of his shirt. I think Franco-Spanish relations have been better. That'll be an interesting duo, the part between those two. There's Lambert in a hurry to Hartson, rolling round Fennec. Fernandez. Neil Lena. Good quality of the passing now, Larson left in the place of Steve Guppy as Alan Thompson he certainly wouldn't see himself as a deputy he's trying to hold down a regular spot but it's difficult there's a lot of competition for places and when you get in you've got to try and stay in Martin Hill set between the, uh, the healthy competition situation with those two both very good both great left foots if anything Guppy maybe has a better delivery from the wide area Stylian Petrov has won a free kick for Celtic. Viss and Townsley both flew into that challenge. And for the set piece, Bobo Baldi is up at the edge of the area alongside Fernandez and Hartson and Silla. And uh, Nick Colgan shifting the odds. Nathan Thompson's poor though. Convincing either with the header out for Ian Murray. And slight miscue on it. And Celtic with another chance here to get the ball into the box. Fernandez played that off. Oh man, corner kick. Alan Oman, an Austrian international now, having made his full international debut against Norway a couple of weeks back. Shadows is Petrov. And his corner blocked. It's actually a poor delivery there from Stanley and Petrov. Alan Thompson before that as well with the free kick. Celtic normally have better delivery. There's so many big players in there, such a threat. The quality into the box has got to be just a little bit better. See that? There's been a real problem for Craig James in the opening stages. to Petrov, trying to get turned, Hibbs kept him out, good pass from O'Neill to McManus, did well, held it up for Orman, and now Ian Murray, playing with a strapping on the right thigh, one could make a fair assumption he's not 100% fit,
That's Gary Smith for Derek Townsley. Good touch. Trying to link up with Craig James, but it's almost Sila intercepted. And again. And it's a Celtic free kick. Momo Salas had a good start to the game. Looks very positive to get down that right hand side. The young Craig James is going to have his work cut out. This Momo, the one thing about him, he'll keep going for the 90 minutes. Hallam's free kick. Colgan for O'Neill. Neil Lennon won the header. That's Viz. And Alan Orman took his eye off it. left foot out to John O'Neill Orman free kick given against Alan Thompson's challenge <laughs> and Matt McCurry was uh, struck by the ball which <laughs> didn't amuse him too much I'm just laughing at that one there Mike McCurry's got hit with the ball in the face it comes off Neil Lennon I think Mike was looking for an apology from Neil Lennon but it wasn't coming simply because he didn't think it was a free kick so dear Townsley's flick, Baldi's clearance, that's Murray. Derek Townsley winding up for a shot, blocked by Bobo Baldi. Sometimes you're not exactly sure that Derek Townsley knows what he's going to do next, so whoever's marking him has little chance. Smith being put under pressure by Fernandez. And Colgan signed from Bournemouth and he's six years at Chelsea. And not a lot of first team football in that time. Celtic in a hurry to take that and Ian Money saw it coming. Chance for him, three against three. Not quite the pass Money wanted. And the sting was taken out of that hips attack. And Murray disappointed with himself that he couldn't have put in Tam McManus. It's certainly a chance for him, no question about it. Celtic slack with the free kick, Alan Thompson giving it away. Ian Murray driving forward with the ball. That's the bit he gets wrong. So the way to pass, the angle of the pass, giving McManus absolutely no chance to get there before Villarreal. Fennec. Alharan won the header. Good jump from Murray. This. Now Petrov, after that scheme of head tennis. And the foul given against Finnick. I thought Mike McCurry may have let this one go to bonus with the Stallion punch off. He's got there first, but he's no chance to pick up the next ball. But when you look at it there, it is a late tackle. He's gone to ground and Stallion has no chance to get the ball because he's got to go over the top of him. Lennon's free kick for Baldi. Played away by this, one back by Lambert. Great challenge. Now Fernandez stopped by a combination of Zambonardi and Smith. McManus, good ball for John O'Neill. This is promising for Hibbs, but O'Neill overran it. And that allowed his former teammate Ulrich Larsson to intercept. Fernandez beaten by Fennec. Well, surely that was advantage for Hibbs. Yes, yeah, a mistake from Mike McCurry. She just let it go. It takes the flow out of the game, Sandy. It does. You know, the Hibbs have broke up the attack, and we've seen them there. It's a few seconds ago. It's the second time it's a tackle there. Fernandez is late, but John O'Neill's got the ball. He's clear, and Hibbs could have counter attacked. John O'Neill's clear and he's standing about two feet in front of Mike McCurry. Played in by Gary Smith. Townsley's flick. 
And Rob Douglas comes all the way. Magnus Hedman still working his way back to full sharpness and before too much longer he'll be looking to put in a challenge for that goalkeeper's jersey. But at the moment, uh, Rob Douglas has been in fine form since the last Old Firm match. He's come up with an impressive response since the criticism he took that time. And a tough character. So is this man, Bobo Balde. Fennec returns it with interest. Larisham. Good control from Petrov and the little flick which sets Alan Thompson in motion. And that took a touch off all man. That's another set at corner. Can we have our ball back? Here it comes. Obvious threat to Hibbs from the set pieces. And from Petrov. Hibbs defended it well. Alan Orman's clearance. Neil Lennon's header drops for Craig James, the 20 year old on loan from Sunderland. And he looks a promising player. Celtic sneaking ahead in terms of possession of the ball. But it's not how much you have it, it's what you do with it. Well, Nick Colgan said uh, an easy night of it so far. I'm sure that'll change as the 90 minutes goes on. But it's been a decent start from Hibs. They have to do just a little bit better when they, they play on the break. And another whistle, another free kick. And it's so difficult to mark when he plays back to goal. He's not the biggest, but he's strong. His body strength is very, very good, and you can't struggle him off the ball. Lennon's free kick, no great challenge on Gary Smith. Ian Murray can clear. The man is chasing. Back it comes from Larson. Smith clearing, but offside. Let's hear from the technical area, it's been quiet so far, Jack. Is it quiet over there? Actually, it is. Uh, Martin and Neil, I think, may, may be worried that the UF have got a secret camera on him somewhere. He's been very laid back, very calm indeed. Bobby Williamson has been a little more active, they're just sorting out the midfield, uh, making sure I think that Jarko Vismix uh, matches the runs of Petrov in the, in the Celtic midfield. Smith, long for Townsley, Val Haddon there. That was John O'Neill, good jump. And spun off the head of this. And a good recovering challenge against Petrov, although what he's done is set up David Fernandez. Fernandez pull into the box, deflected. And it finally cannoned off Fennec. And another set piece chance for Celtic. You don't really want to tot up too many corners conceded to Celtic because uh, you know what they're liable to do to you. I'm just looking at it inside the ball, John Hartz is picked up by Zam Bernardi. That to me looks a bit of a mismatch. Alan Thompson with the corner kick, helped on its way by Fennec. beyond Hartson and uh, while well, Celtic through Hartson and company trying to break the deadlock at Easter Road Rangers as you've seen are 3-0 up already at Ibrox against Livingston two goals for Shota Avaladze one for Barry Ferguson and Rangers cruising Hibs looking to make it difficult for Celtic and they've certainly started pretty well they've played well they've defended well they've been nice and solid and as Chick was saying there, Marco Vis is so important he matches Stallion Petrov's runs forward. 
I think Bobby's got the message to him. So the midfield are doing okay as well at the moment. They're just giving the ball away when they have in safe possession when they try and break forward. Off the head of Zambernardi, Fennec was there, and Orman, and this for Lambert. Baldi, Silla stepping in off the touchline, lovely first touch. And a brilliant run from Momo Silla, abruptly halted, no free kick, says Mike McCarry. That was terrific running with the ball from Silla. So fluid. He's a, a great athlete, as his former manager at St Johnston knows well. Yeah, he's a good player, he's a bit unfortunate there. It's a great run. His first touch is immense from the, the pass from Bobo Baldi. He's going beyond one or two defenders there. I think there's a little bit of contact. I don't think it's a dive, but not enough to give the free kick. James with the throw. Townsley was the target. Baldi up for Fernandez. It was a tough one to control. Fennec, McManus, Townsley, <laughs> grappling with Valhara. McManus, and hips of a corner. That's good play from Hibs down the left-hand side. Townsley finding his corner to win the throw-in. A quick throw-in, Paul McManus was on his bike right away. Put the one self defence under enough pressure to give away the corner. Hibbs, first corner of the match, in from John O'Neill, Townsley's header, off the line from Thompson. Orman trying to get the ball back in, and that's a great effort from Hibbs, and close to taking the lead. Hartson's pass, and an offside flag. And it was Alan Thompson to Celtic's rescue here, Sandy. The chance at both ends, it's a good corner kick from Hibbs. John O'Neill, near post, Derek Townsley coming off the line, got a great flick on it, and Alan Thompson doing his job on the line to clear it, up, clear it away, otherwise that's would have been in front. Well, there were question marks over how Derek Townsley would play as uh, Mitchell Patalainen's replacement up front. That was a clever header, well directed from the O'Neill corner. Side again, Fernandez trying to burst the offside plan that Hibs have, and he reckons that was more than close. It looked very close, no doubt about it. Uh, just on his bait, maybe just a fraction early. The Hibs are playing a high line up in the park at the moment, and when that happens, there's always a chance to get caught in the time, time of, if the time of the run's right. Bobby Williamson's Hibs are a point behind Hearts in the table. Uh, a point ahead of Hearts, I should say, two behind Dunfermline. So, three points here. We would see them in the third place. That's a great incentive, and uh, all the more remarkable when you think back to September, when Hibs were propping up the rest after a miserable start to the season. John O'Neill had a miserable start to the season. Injured, a dislocated shoulder in his second game of the season. They've been a derby, and uh, just playing his fifth game back. Fennec to Yannick Zambernardi. Safety first. Zambernardi has a man of the match award already this season. Uh, you can take part in tonight's competition 0900 10 225 by telephone and texting. No, in fact, no texting tonight, just the telephone number. So Rangers three up at St Ibrox against Livingston, goalless at Easter Road. Larson's free kick, Hartson's header. Good touch from Petrov, good recovery from this. And Norman stays calm before driving it up from McManus. He's been pretty well policed by Valharan. And Momo Sila runs the ball out. surprising that we're goalless when you think that there's no Larson and Sutton in the Celtic side 
No Patalainen or a corner for Hibbs. They're the top scorers in each side. Yeah, but there's still a lot of good players out there. But there's also a lot of very good defenders. Celtics, recent good form, they've, they've played really well, giving away very few goals. And there's no question that Hibbs, after the bad start for the season, it's the defensive area they've improved on enormously, and they're not looking goals at all now. Larson and Sutton missing the opportunity to add to their 38 goals that they've amassed between them already this season. It's remarkable. In comes the James free kick. Larson played it away, and uh, it's a wild one from Alan Orman. He certainly wasn't ready for it, was he? Scored a spectacular goal at Ibrox last season in the two-all draw there. I don't know if you remember that one. That was an absolute cracker. But uh, that time, well off target. It wasn't happening there. But I was just looking at the Celtic defence there. The, the free kick against them. Every player was back inside the, the Celtic box to make sure they don't lose a goal. And there's Chris Sutton. We're all wrapped up. It's a chilly night in Edinburgh. Sam McManus still off the pitch as Rob Douglas prepares to take the goal kick. And uh, Hibbs certainly don't want to lose him because uh, they're already without Patalainen. No Gary O'Connor. And uh, Rob Douglas will come and get that. Chick, what's the latest? It's an arm injury, Rob, that McManus has got. He took a, a knock in that. that having, he's having treatment his nose, you can see around the, the wrist area. A real problem, it seems to have dislocated it or something, but. Uh, I'll give you news as to whether they will make a change. The Bobby Wilson just monitoring the situation at the moment. Yeah, there's real concern there about uh, McManus. Thompson gets it back from Petrov. Useful strike. But uh, Nick Colgan had that well under control. He just watched it wide. Good build up from Celtic, Alan Thompson playing the one through here. Only one thing in his mind, I'm going to have a go. Greatly so, because Celtic made very few shots on target tonight. Tom McManus is back on the pitch. And uh, he's happy to continue. Those are the winning numbers from tonight. If you want to take those in. Seven minutes gone at Easter Road. Hibbs nil, Celtic nil. And it's one of those nights where the Celtic fans are obviously intently watching what's happening here, but with an ear to Radio Scotland and what's happening at uh, Ibrox in that match as well. Uh, Martin O'Neill fully focused, and fully refreshed as well. But uh, looking for his side to find a breakthrough here against a pretty stuffy defensive show so far from Hibbs. Came off the head of Zambernardi. Uh, Fennec expertly directed back to Colgan. That's a good player from the, the back three of Hibbs here. Lost the first header, but getting tucking round, covering his, his uh, other markers at the back and making sure it was nice and safe. Celtic, of course, are a point ahead of Rangers going into tonight's games. So that might just change. And Valdi was caught by Tam McManus after the ball had gone. And I think uh, if that wasn't seen, then McManus is a little bit fortunate. He's certainly late with the tackle, no question. But Mobaldi doesn't go, go down easily. Well, there he was, and uh, that's uh, been yellow carded before that tackle. Yeah, he's certainly late, no question about it. It's a forward tackle. And I think the irony of it is that Tom McManus has hurt himself in, uh, in making that challenge. He's got a sore arm already, and now he's hurt his leg um, as he left it in when Balde cleared, so it uh, might be bad news all around. In fact, he's shaking his head 
towards the bench. I wonder if this match is going to be over shortly for McManus. Good turn from Fernandez. In for Joe Hartson, just too much. Silla, cross blocked by Zambonardi. Lambert was caught by Murray. That's a free kick. Well, Paul Lambert's not one to make a meal of things, but uh, I'm not sure that merited the yellow. I think it's maybe his reaction to the referee is more dissent as much as anything else. Certainly wasn't a bad tackle. It's Paul Lambert's a decent touch here. He's caught the sole of his foot. You know, I don't think he can blame Paul Lambert at all. He's certainly the contact made, and those kind of tackles are very painful. Spuds into his foot. Well, this could be an important moment for Hibbs because uh, Alan Thompson is lining this one up and it looks to be in just the sort of position that favours his left foot. Nick Colgan making his plans. Just over half an hour gone. Thompson, just too high. Relief all round among the Hibs fans because he scored a few spectacular ones from that sort of range. And, of course, next for Celtic, it's Ibrox. Saturday lunchtime, we're on at 10 past 12 for a 12.30 kick-off, the second Old Firm match of the season. If it's anything like the first one, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Missed that one. Rangers against Celtic, and how will these two be placed, I wonder, when uh, this evening's action is over? Good challenge by John O'Neill and Neil Lennon. Scrapping well in that midfield area. And you have to compete against Celtic in there because once they take charge, you could be in all sorts of trouble. Murray to Finnick. That's straight at Sila, but uh, Momo Sila just glanced it on to Craig James, who uh, very politely gave it back. In goes Viss against Lambert. And Murray, good run from Ian Murray, taking the direct route and luring Petrov into the challenge, which was late, and that's a yellow. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed, Mick McCurry, producing a card for this one. Still in Petrov, his foot's on the ground, it's not high, he's not going to hurt Ian Murray, certainly catches him. It is a, is a, a free kick, no question, but I would doubt if that's actually a yellow. These last two bookings seem totally unnecessary. I think they balance out, don't they? Ian Murray's booked for uh, the challenge and then the reaction to Lambert and still in Petrov, I think, for, the, for me, is booked to balance things out. Just, just good friends. I've always got a spare pencil at this rate, Mike McCurry. <laughs> Siarkovis with the free kick, right into the wall. And now Celtic looking to offer something of their own. Thompson's pass, and well covered by Zambonardi. Larson with the header. And Orman for Hibbs. Useful for O'Neill, who came off Balde's head. And good work from Lambert. Hibbs playing a strong pressing game there, putting Celtic under a little bit of pressure. They're working very hard, especially in the middle of the park, and they're, they're getting a lot of reward from that, because Celtic have not been allowed to play, lift their head and play passes. Not the most convincing of clearances there from Bobo Baldi, which uh, set up Hibbs. Townsley to McManus. That was a good challenge by Baldi in response, as McManus threatens. There was only ever going to be one winner there, that man Bobo Baldi, when it comes to 50-50s. Dan McManus, mate, the thought, mate, just because through his head here, I kicked this man earlier. Absolutely no chance of getting that one, big Bobo, good defending, keeps his eye on the ball. You don't kick Bobo twice. <laughs> Yarko 
Silvis took too long to make up his mind. And what a good recovery from Yannick Zambernardi against David Fernandez. That was so important. There's an offside flag up against uh, Tom McManus. And uh, a little bit of afters as well again there between McManus and Baldi. But it was so impressive from Zambernardi in defence. Perhaps that was absolutely crucial. He's a good defender. He tends it to perfection. He's always fit to the ball. Some remarkable scorelines around the country. Three for Rangers, four for Motherwell, as you've seen. Still awaiting the breakthrough here. And Nick Colgan still to make a serious save. Still in Petrov for John Hartzell. It's an up and under, which Nick Colgan comes to collect. And there were a lot of bodies in the box. Well won by Baldi, taking no prisoners. But Hibs are well fired up here, you can see it in the way they're playing, you can see it in the way they're attacking the ball, and this is exactly what Bobby Williamson wanted. It's the only way you get a chance against Old Firm, if you let them play, they'll pass the ball beyond you and through you all day long, you have to compete, you have to close them down, and you have to get fair tackles in, and Hibs have done that very well in the first 36 minutes of this match. The left foot of Larson and the head of Zambernardi. Lennon to Sila and he reacted to the challenge of Townsley. Play goes on. And I wonder if there will be words for the Celtic midfielder once the ball is dead. Because Mike McCulley certainly saw that reaction. And it was Rob Douglas outside the area when he picked the ball up. The Hibs fans are convinced. We'll need another look at that. Fernandez. Fennec. That's Lambert. And cleared by Oman. Well, a couple of incidents to review once the ball finally goes out of play. And uh, Tom McManus certainly reacted very quickly when he thought uh, it was handball outside the area. Well, the unfortunate thing is the referee can't tell from his angle, and I tell you what, he's outside. Mike McCurry can't really see it properly, and the linesman's in the opposite side of the pitch. He's got no chance of seeing exactly where the goalkeeper is. He's a lucky man, that's another lucky man there. Neil Lennon certainly had the reaction. It's the tap of his foot. You yeah. see it here at Derek Townsley, just a slight reaction here. Yeah, it was uh, possibly a high boot from Townsley, but uh, Neil Lennon reacted and might well have been booked for that. Uh, what there's no doubt about is that uh, Rob Douglas handled the ball outside the area. McManus with the cross, it's a terrific ball into the area, and uh, that's a tremendous header from Paul Lambert, keeping out John O'Neill. That's a magnificent header, good run from John O'Neill. Decent ball into the box with pace on it from McManus, looks up, knows where he's putting it, and he'll attacking it, and that's great play from the Celtic captain. Lambert's pass for Fernandez, good challenge by Gary Smith. Silla kept out by James. Pass from O'Neill behind Orman. No free kick, despite the roar from the Hibs fans. In fact, it's now a Celtic free kick. It was certainly a physical challenge from Bobo Baldi on Derek Townsley. He wasn't given an inch, was he? You see it here, he's up early. And that's a free kick, Mike McCurry's missed that one, he's nudged him out the, out the road, knocked him physically out the road. It's I don't my, see why Mike McCurry doesn't give that. It's my ball, you better move over, says Bobo. Larson's cross, Hartson's header. And behind for a goal kick. Well, he makes his presence felt all over the pitch. 
Bobo Baldi and uh, Derek Townsley might uh, think twice about trying to knock him out of the way again next time. He's certainly very physical, he certainly attacks the ball, he's actually a bit more refined now than he was when he came to Celtic Park at first, doesn't give away as many free kicks, and he might have frightened Mick McCurry today because <laughs> that looked a free kick. Lennon, back for Douglas, and uh, didn't quite make it. Neil Lennon, beaten by Derek Townsley, who wanted it back from John O'Neill. I'm just watching the Hibs team at the moment, they're pressing Celtic all over the park, getting lots of joy because of that, and they're all working exceptionally hard. Bob Williams will be delighted with his team so far in the first half. Lambert to Larson. I was speaking to him yesterday and he was his main concern about tonight was finding the right dressing room over at Larson after so long at Easter Road. And very much a Celtic player now. And that's out. playing his 20th Celtic game tonight and uh, took a while to settle as you would but he now looks part of the fittings in comes the free kick and that was John O'Neill with an important header Townsley, Orman one back by Petrov Lennon to Lambert. Hartson. Alharan. Works it on to Sila. Uh, not for the first time in the match. It's slipped under the boot of Sila. And the hips of a free kick. Well, the goal's flying in all around the country but one is still to fly in at Easter Road. If you've just joined us, you'll have noticed, no Larson, no Sutton, and no Patalainen for Hibs. So three regular goal scorers missing, and uh, it's that uh, cutting edge which is uh, missing at the moment, because Sutton would have hoped to add to his 12 goals, but uh, injured his hip in training yesterday. I think the one thing Martin will be really disappointed is the fact that Nick Colgan has had a very, very easy night so far. He's hardly the safe to make one or two cross balls, but really never been under enough pressure at all. And that's so unlike Celtic. There's a good header from Larison. Crunching challenge from Thompson on Orman, and that wasn't half bad either from Larson. Celtic more than happy to mix it. And they're having to at the moment because Hibs are asking serious questions of them. Orman into the box. Ian Murray on target, but not a difficult save for Douglas. Tugging going on between Fernandez and Zambernardi. And I think uh, David Fernandez, having got an advantage, maybe he now wishes he'd got the free kick. The referee certainly played advantage there, but Fernandez lost a lot of time, allowing the Hibs players to get back behind the ball. Money. Baldi to Lennon, but he's immediately under pressure from Murray. Thompson down the line for Petrov. Jakovic tracking the Petrov run. The Finnish international. He's been capped about 40 times for his country. Slow start with Hibs, but now a mainstay in that midfield for Bobby Williamson.
John Hartson with little joy so far in front of goal, but uh, you don't want to take your eye off him for a split second. Larson in, James away. Good work from McManus and Townsley. Now O'Neill puts his foot on the ball, realising there wasn't too much up ahead of him. San Bernardi and O'Neill stepped over it, hoping it would run through for Murray. Lennon was there, and he's offside when he gets it back from Fernandez. Not going according to plan for to South for Celtic. No, it's not, and it's because they hit the work rate for Hibs team. They've got a good game plan as well. They're working very hard. They're solid. Hard to get through in the middle of the park. Five at the back when necessary. Neil Lennon, you can see the frustration in his face here. And he'll also and he's be not looking too happy either, is he? I think there may be a few words in that Celtic dressing room at half time. Thirteen seconds of time added on, half time at Easter Road, and there is no doubt which will be the happier dressing room at half time because it took Alan Thompson on the goal line on the post, the head off the line from uh, Derek Townsley following a John O'Neill corner kick. That was about as near as we've got to a goal in the first half and Hibs have got better and better as that first half has gone on and Jerry McCabe I'm sure will be happy Jerry I would imagine it's so far so good yeah, I think I'll own the Celtic Pistol back up to it I know, I don't really take his five or three minutes to sell it now again a bit towsy at times here on both sides but you know it's good to see you know we're in you know, clean sheet the first half Mind you, many times we said against Rangers Celtic, it's so far so good at half time, so you would tell them, and there's a long way to go. Oh, that's it, certainly. You know, they've got players that can hurt you, know, lack of concentration, you know, and they'll punish you. John Harrison's had a few headers, but fortunately for us, he's directed them, you know, off goals. But as I say, hopefully, the boys can keep their concentration in the second half. I know Bobby Williamson doesn't like me relaying or broadcasting his uh, instructions to the dugout, but I heard them when they go at the Argo Race Strike, make sure he marks the runs of Petrov. Oh, he's a difficult player to mark, you know, Petrov, and you know, certainly we've got to watch the runners from midfield. As I say, they've got players who can score in midfield up front, you know, so, as I say, we've got to be on our toes the second half. There was a little concern, I think, about Tom McManus, it was, it was a wrist injury. I think he got a stud in the arm, you know, but uh, I think Tom likes a wee bit of sympathy votes, but he's, he's, <laughs> he's beginning to go on right now, you know. I'm sure you'll tell him in the half time. Thanks. Cheers, Jerry. Thanks, Jack. Tommy Manis likes a sympathy vote, apparently. Excellent. Uh, at half time, uh, Paul and Murdo, I would suggest that uh, Bobby Williamson is probably quite happy given that it's still nil nil. No question. I think tactically he's done it. His, his, his team's done everything right he's asked of them. They've been competitive in midfield, they've stuck their foot in. I think they've been well organised, got a good shape to them, and they've worked hard at Celtic space. Celtic like time to pass and build the play. And any time the player's in possession, straight away the nearest player, they're working hard at their space and denying them time uh, to really pick their pass out. But it's been a very productive half. Perhaps uh, for Hibs. Yeah, absolutely. Perhaps the best chances have actually come from Hibs as well. Do you think, Murdo, maybe that Celtic are, are lacking that, that firepower up front, the fact that uh, Chris Sutton and Henrik Larsson aren't there? Well, you're always going to miss two of the best uh, strikers in the country, but uh, you've got to say that uh, Hartson's about the place. Fernandes has been playing reasonably well. But I just think you've got to give an awful lot of credit to Hibs the way they fought back. Early on, I felt Celtic were, were the better side. But the last 25 minutes of that half, Hibs were in about Celtic. They stopped them playing. They denied the space. They stopped the rhythm of Celtic. And they're finding it tough to get it back. And they've one or two instances. It's been, I, thought, I think it's been a very difficult game for the referee this, this evening. Yeah, absolutely. There's a... It's getting a bit tasty, certainly. Uh, Mike McCurry having to hand out a few cards as well. No goals so far at, uh, at Easter Road, but lots of goals throughout the, the country. At Ibrox at the moment, Paul Gascoigne is back this evening. He's doing the, the half-time draw. Looking, is that Paul Gascoigne? He can't possibly. He's looking fit and young, almost. There you go. Well, let's, uh, let's hear what uh, the story of the first half is from Paul Mitchell. And the story of the first half, Dougie, is she could have put the game over, signs up after just nine minutes, Rangers were two ahead and cruising, they added a further goal from Sean Avalanche, but really it's been all Rangers, and Livingston just didn't get started in this one. Ronald De Boer with a chance after just 12 seconds, well saved by Sanchez Brutto, but a Barry Ferguson free kick after seven minutes of Rangers ahead. Two minutes later, a McCann cross is converted by Avalanche, it did pick up a slight deflection and Brutto was beaten. Then in 70 minutes, Gary Boland failed to challenge Avalanche and Avalanche just knocked the ball home for his second. He could have had a hat-trick, he's had two good chances. Michael Moles had chances as well, but in part he moved at Ibrox with the return of Paul Gascoigne. And half-time, it's Rangers 3, Livingston 0. Paul Gascoigne, absolutely delighted to be back at Ibrox there. That's going to be an interesting one. That, that news is going to get into the Celtic dressing room and uh, they're not going to be happy there, Murdo. 
Uh, not at all. Obviously, they'll both be thinking now towards the weekend. Uh, Rangers, I think, are an easy street just now, so they can go and coast. They can make one or two changes. Loving Krantz is on the bench, and I think Alec might be thinking, give him 25 minutes and see, get him ready for the weekend. But also, it's Celtic now. They've got to go and lift it again, yeah. and that's going to take more en energy away from the game at the weekend, yeah. and importantly as well, next Thursday. OK, absolutely. Well, we'll get uh, highlights of that match, uh, Rangers against Livingston, after the uh, Hibernian Celtic game but uh, here's the half-time score so far in the Bank of Scotland Premier League uh, up at Dens Park Dundee one up this so far Dunfermline Athletic three against Dundee United of course it's 0-0 uh, in our live match there's a one for you Motherwell four Heart of Midlothian nil Hibs fans that might cheer you up after, after the first half we've just seen and of course as we've just had that match report Rangers three Livingston nil Motherwell, of course, haven't won since the uh, 11th of September when they won against Celtic in the league, and that's a fantastic result. Well, not a half-time result anyway. Four goals so far from them. Now, that's uh, quite incredible for Terry Butcher, you know, getting four goals in the first... I don't think he's scored four goals all season almost. No, he'll be delighted, wasn't yeah. he? And it just shows, uh, you know, hopefully it's not a freak result. They can go and win that game and build some confidence and self-belief and get kind of continued uh, consistent results. Yeah, well, uh, Hibs, of course, playing Celtic tonight, trying to get to third place in the league who are third place in the league, Dunfermline. They're at home tonight against Dundee United, and Ken McRobb is there. And no doubt at all that they're going to be in third place after tonight, because at half-time they lead by three goals to nil, and it could have been more. Craig Brewster set the pattern in the fourth minute. Nicholson delivered the low cross in from the right. Brewster ran 30 yards to meet it and side put it into the net. He then had a shot saved by Gallagher, which could well have been number two. Walker and Bullen headed past when they should have at least hit the target. Dundee United hadn't really been seen as a strike force, but uh, Jim Hamilton did have a shot after 33 minutes, which produced a good save on Derek Stilley. But that just delayed the inevitable. Three minutes later, Scott Walker was taken down by Lachlan inside the United penalty box. Craig Brewster stepped up and converted from the penalty spot, his 10th of the season, to make it 2-0. And within four minutes... It was number three. Free kick delivered in from the right. Scott Walker at the back post and a header high into the net. It could have been four before the break. Lachlan very lax and uh, just a little bit too composed, but he wasn't. He was dispossessed 30 yards out. Brewster, who's having a great match up front, along with Crawford, looked up, took a chance from 30 yards, but his lob went over the bar. 3-0 going on many more, and United are going to have to get themselves sorted out at half-time. Otherwise... I reckon we could have many more goals in this second half. At half-time, it's Thunder United losing by three goals to nil to Dunfermline. Thanks very much, Ken. Really incredible Dunfermline season so far. Third in the league at the moment, and if they carry on, they're 3-0 ahead. Indeed, if they just win that game, they will certainly be third at the end of play tonight. One other rather remarkable score, or half-time score anyway, so far is 4-0 at, uh, at uh, Fir Park. Motherwell against Hearts. Bill Moles is there. I think you should warm the Hearts fans. They switch off or look away, Dougie, before you gave that scoreline. It's been an incredible first half here. As you say, it's Motherwell 4, Hearts 0. Motherwell had scored only four goals in their last six innings. Rattled in those four in a 21-minute period. Pearson started in 15 minutes, turning to wheel in a, a, a cross from uh, McFadden. Then McFadden got the second from the penalty spot three minutes later. He added the third, cutting in on a pass from Pearson, drilling a ball into the bottom right-hand side of Roddy McKenzie goal and it was Derek Adams who got the fourth with a diving header again from a Pearson's cross. Four going on six or seven here in the first half at third part. Quite incredible. Motherwell four, Hearts nil. Thanks very much Bill. Inc absolutely incredible result there. Motherwell have gone so badly this season since uh, the middle of September anyway but getting four goals so far in that match. Now up to Dundee where it's uh, let me see who's up to Dundee. Party Thistle well, they scored three at the weekend. Uh, Alec Burns getting three of them but they're at Dens Park and so is Jim Spence. Yes same one indeed Dougie. Thank you very much. Dundee won Party Thistle nil. Nacho Novo the man who's tortured Party Thistle tonight. When Dundee sent out a line up with four strikers you suspected they meant business so it's proved. They're well worth their 1-0 lead up and assured positive attack attacking performance. Novo has tormented the Jags defence as I say in 20 minutes he cracked a bar after an electric turn and shot from about 18 yards. A couple of minutes later he drove one in from 12 yards. Kenny Arthur saved brilliantly but it was Arthur who let the Jags down when Gary Brady fired in a free kick from 25 yards which snuck into his left hand side of the net to leave it at half time. Dundee won. Patrick Tissel nil. Thanks very much, Jim. Well, uh, lo as I said, lots of goals around the country. What do you think so far about that? some of these results tonight uh, or half time scores so far? Anyway, Paul, I'm 
uh, that's done D1 nil up there. Yeah, I mean it's been amazing, isn't it? I mean there's the volume of goals scored, isn't it? I mean when's the when's the last time you did somebody goals scored by by half time? But the, the Motherwell one is uh, fascinating, and uh, as you said, they're having a dreadful time, and that one in particular. Uh, hopefully, I'm pleased for Terry Butcher because he's a good lad. He certainly is. Now uh, we'll have highlights, of course, of all those matches, all the goals on Reporting Scotland on BBC One Scotland tomorrow night. But let's look at our live match tonight: Hibernian against Celtic. Let's see the story of the first half. This was actually essential, Murdo, that, uh, that Celtic starts fairly well because, I mean, they need to make sure that they're still that one point on top of the league uh, come Saturday for that essential uh, Rangers-Celtic game. Well, it's and amazing uh, how the, the mood swings, but again, there's how have the, the, the best chance early on there. It was a, a good header in, but Alan Thompson, I think he was caught unawares. He, look, he was holding on to the post there, there wasn't yeah. <laughs> But I, I think it's so important to have players on the line. Now, do you think perhaps that you know we mentioned it uh, before that, and, and also just at the half-time whistle there that Celtic are missing the firepower up the front? Like, Here's a probably quite a good example. Yeah, of I mean that, that was good linking play, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's and good linking play, but but in those long shots, absolutely, and they've not really hit the target either for their initial early possession. I think this is the example about no Larson about the place because normally Larson's in there and it's a way to pass across the box there, just too strong for John Harson to get in the hit, the end of it. No Larson about the place, did you say there? I'm glad I got you correctly there, and uh, of course. Uh, other, uh, you think that uh, this is a, what, something just coming up here that we thought uh, that Rob Douglas perhaps had been booked. Did he handle outside the box here? Yes, he did. There's no doubt in my mind about that. He was uh, played it on one foot, he put it uh, onto his hand. And uh, I think he's a very, very lucky man indeed. You yeah. look at it from this angle. He's touched yeah. it there, but yeah. no, he's very tight. But yeah. it's difficult for the referee, I think, to, to go and make a decision in that one there. And I suppose Celtic need their captain to be as uh, strong as he possibly yeah. can be. And this is a great header. Yeah, here. I just felt wonderful cross from Tom McManus there. At first, I thought it was O'Hara or someone in there. The, the, the nature of the, the clearance here, but Paul Lambert diving full length there. But I look at the quality here, the pace going into the box, but Lambert getting across in front of Townsley there and just knocking the ball away. And let's have a look at the half-time stats there. Possession fairly even, actually, Celtic just ahead, but uh, and also Hibernian with more shots on goal, 3-2. to two. A Fouls committed, though, a lot of fouls committed in that first half. 13 for Hibs and 10 for Celtic. It's getting a bit tasty, Murder. It's very, getting very tasty <laughs> towards the end of that first half. Without a doubt, and that's what we're looking forward to, that it's going to be very competitive in the second half. But we're looking everywhere around Scotland just now, and there's so many goals getting scored. And normally in BBC in the live games, we've been watching five and six goals. Hopefully we can get some in the second half. Yeah, OK, well, definitely. Well, there's lots of goals around the country, as Murdo says. We want to see some goals at Easter Road. Stick around, because uh, we've got the 45 minutes of the second half coming up. At the moment, though, Jonathan Gould is talking to Chick Young. Johnny Hibbs have made that difficult for uh, Celtic the first half, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Um, defences have really been on top um, so far in the game. Um, there's not really been, been any clear-cut chances, and neither keeper have had any, uh, you know, serious saves to make. Has the absence of Sutton and Larson been significant? You, you're always going to miss two players like that, but um, you know, you come to a place like Hibbs and they they do uh, stop you from playing. They put you under a lot of pressure, and that and that's shown. I'm sure that uh, in that Celtic dressing room, they're confident the second second half they can turn it. Well, we're kicking down the hill. I think. It, you know, chance wins a goal check and um, that's what we need at the moment um, just to keep the momentum going. Thanks John. Thank you. Well those half-time match statistics almost a collector's item when you looked at the details which told you that Celtic have not had a shot on target in uh, the first 45 minutes and it's uh, not often you can say that about uh, a team which has scored 51 goals in 17 league games so far this season. That's a, an average of exactly three goals per game. And uh, thus far, apart from the, the old firm draw at Celtic Park, there's only one blemish on Celtic's league record, and it was, of course, defeat at Fir Park against Motherwell. Since then, there's been uh, little faltering in the Celtic machine, but I just wonder tonight, Sandy, if Hibs have got it within them to put a spoke in the wheels. Well, I've seen it so often before that teams compete for so far into a game, half-time into the second half, but the first goal is going to be so important, Rob, and that's where Hibs, it's looking good for them tonight. They've defended exceptionally well, but besides that, Martin neal has got to be really disappointed in the fact that they haven't created anything like the opportunities they normally do. You, you see players like Larson, Sutton, Hartson missing opportunities in front of goal except the goalkeeper are making saves. But tonight that just hasn't happened. And if they don't improve that in the second half, you can see this being a bit of a surprise result. Not much doubt the Rangers are cruising towards three points at Ibrox, as we heard from Paul Mitchell, three goals already to the good against Livingston. 
But uh, Hibs have their own campaign to fight for here. And having uh, started the season at the bottom of the league, they've been climbing and climbing under the management of Bobby Williamson. And uh, having lost uh, five of their first six games, Hibs then won five in a row, and that really launched them up the table. And Martin O'Neill is well aware that uh, Hibs have been this season a reviving force. And uh, they're certainly putting a threat towards Dunfermline in terms of that third place finish in the league. Well, it looks as if Dunfermline will stay there, be up at half time. And uh, Hibs in good spirits. I think Jamie McKay was a bit camera shy. And uh, he's certainly camera shy because he's turned his back on us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Chick, I believe he, he banned you from the technical area because he didn't want you to hear what you were saying, is that right? No, I, I'm, back in, I'm back in the technical area. In fact, I give a word with Chris Sutton as the second half gets underway. Chris tells us about the injury, first of all. The Celtic fans will want to know are you in danger of missing the Old Firm game? Well, I don't know yet. Uh, I've had a little bit of a sore hip the last couple of days and I'll just see how I go. This was obviously not no chance of risking you tonight. But you just uh, see how it goes in training over the next couple of days. Yeah. What do you think? What have you made in the first half? It's been tight, but we expected it to be tight. Um, it's, been a, it's been a close game. We just have to see how we get on the second half. Nice, Josh. Good to hear from Chris Sutton. Tight lipped, you might say, but <laughs> he managed a few words with Chick. Here's Ian Murray lining up for the shots. It's a terrific effort from Murray. And a great save by Rob Douglas, but an offside flag is up. That's a strange decision. Ian Murray certainly picking up the ball as it comes back out of me. He's got to be off now. Must be McManus, it was offside, but Ian Murray doesn't realise that. Great feet, moving the ball from his right foot to his left foot and making Rob Douglas work very hard there. He's got better and better in this game, Ian Murray. He was very influential in the last 20 minutes or so of the first half. And uh, he's firing on all cylinders after the restart as well. San Bernardi defends it well against Sila. The pass for Viss. Got enough on it to find John O'Neill. One back by Sila. And the rescue mission by Murray. Craig James gets a second chance. Tom McManus chasing the long ball from Ian Murray, it was swirling up in the breeze. Larison looking for Fernandez, Gary Smith first there. Celtic throw. You get the feeling, Sandy Fernandez. He's bent to be, isn't he? Short of matches, short of sharpness. It looks that way. You know, you've also got the situation where Hearts and, and uh, Fernandez. It's the first time they've played together, and that's shown a little bit as well. It takes time to get a good understanding. Larison, Fernandez, and that can be Colgan's. Shot at Arbeladze, scored a hat-trick at Ibrox, we hear, as Rangers go further clear of Livingston. It's uh, delicately poised here, and Hibbs looking to pick up where they left off at the end of the first half, and they really have done so far. They've had a good start to the second half, very competitive again, and the, the noticeable thing for me is every time there's a long ball played forward, maybe just a hopeful ball, McManus and Townsley, they're trying to get to the end of it and making lives really difficult for the Celtic defenders. Sila was caught by this, and the free kick's been given. That's the late tackle. Momo Sila taking the ball, taking it round this here, and he's very late, no intention of going for the ball that time. Paul Lambert, David Fernandez, and an offside is given against him. He's scratching his head. 
It's happened too often to Fernandes tonight. He's got to watch the line, can't go too early. He's very unforced. He has Zab Bernardi in the almost a left back position. May have played him on side. You can see why he's complaining about that one. Back from James to Tinsley. Much in it when uh, Hibbs went to Celtic Park in September. One goal settled it that day, and it was John Hartson who was the match winner. Hibbs have done pretty well against the old firm this season. Uh, not too many teams can claim that. They're certainly a hard team to beat now, Hibbs. They certainly compete. Here's Momo Silla, great control. Didn't get much on the shot. It's very unfortunate. It's a good change of play from Celtic left hand side to right. Silla always willing to go forward. Decent first touch. It's a stretching for that one. Couldn't get enough on the ball. Good defending by Craig James, who uh, got as much on that as uh, Silla did, I think, as it uh, lobbed back into the arms of Colgan. Would that be Colgan's first save? Yeah. No shots on target and few saves so far for Colgan, few if any. But, uh, you would never underestimate Celtic. That would be sheer folly. Sila plays the one-two with Petrov. Well, it was a one, not sure about the two. James to Derek Townsley. And back. That's useful. For Tom McManus. Skips away from Ulrich Larson. Opportunity knocking for McManus. And Derek Tansley was always struggling to get there to be on the end of the cross. It was a hard one, but it's a good move from Hibbs. But they're doing the left hand side, and McManus again chasing the lost cross, leaving Larson for pace there. This is a poor bit, he's got to try and pick out Tunsley. Either hold on to the ball or try and pick your own man. He just couldn't quite make up his mind what to do there, over hitting the cross. What you say about that as well, Sandy, is just lack of, a lack of support. Yeah, Townsley was involved in the build-up, and just it's almost impossible to do that and then get to get there for the ball in the box. Useful back heel there from John O'Neill for Alan Orman, who couldn't really control the ball on the run. The tips with a lot of ideas and a positive outlook about this game. at this moment, Celtic under a fair bit of strain. Thompson, Fernandez wrestled to the ground by Paul Fennick, free kick. Celtic, you feel, just need a lot bit more quality in the wide areas. Thompson, especially down the left-hand side, hasn't been too involved in the play. The other side, still has been there more often, but the final ball hasn't been of real quality. In from Thompson, Fenix header, Petrov, and Lambert to Sila. The pass from Lambert failed to find its way back to Momo Sila. Petrov trying to get away from this, and it's a free kick. The Finnish international struggled to cope here as Petrov turned away from him. I think you'll find he'll receive a yellow card as well, that's a late tackle on Stylian Petrov. And if he could have played advantage, but I think he wanted to pull this up for the yellow card. He's had two or three three kicks against him the last few minutes. So that's the third booking of the match, Jakovic and Ian Murray of Hibs caution Stylian Petrov for Celtic. Certainly the chance of a strike at goal here. And Nick Colgan has all his outfield players between him and the ball. Rolled for Alan Thompson. It just swerved away a little bit too much for him off the outside of the left peg. Wasn't far away, but the important thing is to get it on target. Simple free kick, touch to the side, 
Thompson firing through the ball. Good work from the Hibs players in the wall. If it had been on target, I'm sure it would have been blocked. But again, Nick Cogan not having to work. Yeah, and the Hibs goalie looked pretty happy with it as well. He watched it wide from Thompson. Played in by James. And Hartson watched very closely by Zambernardi. John O'Neill, clever pass for Ian Murray. Well cut out by Valhara. Petrov away from Zambernardi. Fernandez trying to hold his one to keep himself on side. Petrov couldn't play that ball there. Fernandez is straight offside again. Well, Ian Murray had more time than he appreciated there. Neil Lennon under the bouncing ball. Oh man. Smith to Zambernardi. That's poor, given away, straight at Lambert. Thompson finds Lambert, laid off for Fernandez. And that's a waste. Celtic far from firing on all cylinders. You can't say that about Dunfermline with four goals at East End Park already tonight, but uh, it's not happening for O'Neill's team at the moment. No, it's not. Uh, I don't think it'll be too long before we see a change. We've got Sean Maloney on there, Steve Guff is another possibility. His delivery with the left foot down that left hand side is so good, and that just ha hasn't happened tonight for Alan Thompson. John Hartson trying to chase the Sila header. Danny Smith covering across. Smith rescued from the reserves at Aberdeen by Alec McLeish when he was manager of Hibs. Valharan trying to shimmy his way through. It was a good run. Finally ended. And James clears. Back it comes from Larson. And Zambernardi, I think, could have done better than that. Thompson gets a free kick, obstruction is the ruling again, Storman. Thompson's free kick, looking for uh, Sila, and failing to find him. And Celtic... Uh, Less than threatening from a set piece, quite the opposite of uh, what we're used to. Yeah, they normally deliver the ball so well with pace, played into the box to attack it. With that one, it's difficult to attack the ball. It's so high. If you watch Alan Thompson here, he's leaning back right over the ball. It's a difficult one to try and win, an easy one for the defender to, to block the, the run more than anything else. Good play from uh, Tom McManus. Well, I thought he did pretty well there, but might just have brushed his arm, but. Game on. O'Neill and Murray, two crucial figures at the heart of the game for Hibbs. That's Valharan. Free kick against Lambert, leading with his arm, leading with his elbow. Yeah, straight in front of the referee. Nate McCurry's not going to miss that one. Paul Lambert's not happy with him, but you see Paul here. He almost slapped John O'Neill on the top of his head. Easy one for the referee. Marita Townsley for O'Neill, surrounded by yellow shirts. All the way back. That's Baldé. Very competitive, no question about that, but it's very fairly played as well. No nastiness about the game. Well, 
life of mammals, starting now on BBC Two Scotland. free kick back it comes from Murray and a comfortable take for Ralph Douglas and uh, looks as if Celtic have plans on freshening things up more of that in a minute and another offside flag trick yeah Steve Guppy is going to come on and uh, I don't think it'll take a, an outside bet to suggest it'll be Alan Thompson who replacing but uh, I'll be wrong before Rob actually Alan Thompson Funny enough, since he saw the board and the activity in the dugout, he's developed a little limp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know it's not Arby Ladsy this time, at least, anyway. Can rule him out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Steve Guppy getting ready for action, and a fit bet he'll start if fit on Saturday lunchtime as well in the old farm game. But uh, Celtic needs some better ball into the box. Townsley's layoff, Lennon was first there. Wonder if Bobby Williamson might fancy freshening things up for his team as well. Fernandez, Silla successfully closed out, but at the expense of a corner kick. It is to be Guppy for Thompson shortly for Celtic. So this might be his last involvement, Alan Thompson. Larson watched by Townsley. Alan Thompson's delivery, and it's Townsley there. Here it comes again, Jakob Viss this time with the feeling at it. Iverson for Hartson, and that's a good header from Paul Fennick. He was heading for Balde, and he diverted it back to Nick Colgan. It's good defending from Hibbs all together there. The back three again, holding their ground, covering each other, and a good safe header back to the keeper. That was out before Alan Thompson played the ball away, and, uh, well, he won't have far to go here, because uh, he's about to be hooked. Thompson off. Guppy on. You can understand that substitution down the left hand side. There really hasn't been the normal quality you would expect from Alan Thompson. He's maybe carrying a little knob, but Steve Guppy, I'm sure Martin's get him on with the instructions. Get down there and get some ammunition into the box. It's a good head flick from John O'Neill. Man is against Larson. Hips throw. Just 21, Tom McManus, he seems to have been on the scene for a long time, but still a young player. He'll learn. John Hartson. Almost seen it. Tries to get beyond money. Smith put in a crunching challenge right on the byline to ensure there was no danger for Hibbs there. Again, Sulla trying to get down that right-hand side, but outnumbered by the Hibbs defenders. James was there, Sam Bernardo was there, and Gary Smith covered really well. Started well, Sulla, Sandy. Got a couple of good balls in early on, but we haven't seen an awful lot of quality on the delivery from that side of the pitch either. He's got a lot of pressure, but you'd expect a bit more. Good touch from Townsley from McManus, who's away from Larson. He'll have to do it all on his own because it's uh, symptomatic of the second half. But when Tom McManus does get into the box, there's nothing up with him, perhaps. Well, it's difficult to defend, you know, do it from both ends of the park, but it's good play again. Townsley just to deflect through to McManus. They're having to feed off each other, so it's hard to get support in there. But McManus does exceptionally well here. He can't go anywhere. The best can gets a corner kick, and he managed to do that. Neil with the corner kick, and well 
well taken by Rob Douglas. Zambernardi found Fennec. James. Tansley loses out. This to Fennec. He wanted more time than was available, but he did well to push that through for John O'Neill. Well, John O'Neill didn't catch the shots, but uh, Derek Tansley might just have got a flick on it to take that away from Rob Douglas. He ended up juggling the ball. And there's an uncertainty about Celtic, which we're, we're not used to. And we're not used to late tackles either from Paul Lambert. He's already been booked, he's got to be really careful. Just a little bit late. Here's a shot from John O'Neill. Townsley tried to get a touch through. I think that was enough to put Rab Douglas off. It certainly came off him, which is unusual for him, but Ilrit Larson first to the ball. Smith's free kick. Played away by Larson, and the free kick is given against Townsley for backing in to the Hibs defender, for the Celtic defender, I should say, old, old habits die hard. You can see him holding on here, he's holding Larson, back it in, making life difficult. Root one to John Hartson. Petrov gets it away to Silla. Craig James chasing. Did well to get that in, Momo Silla. Here's Fernandez and Hartson and wide. It's Celtic's best chance in the night, no doubt. Momo Silla down the right hand side. Should have played it in just a fraction earlier. Could have been blocked, but he managed to get there. Fernandez, intelligent play, back to go. And that's the one where John Hartson gets it wrong. She hit it first time. Had to get the time to take a touch and fire it off. Just here, just play it as it comes and put the goalkeeper under pressure. But what you'd have to say about that Hibs defending is that they got out very quickly to close down the scoring opportunities, firstly for Fernandez, then Hartson. Well, Haran was caught there as he played that away. Martin Neal doesn't want any more injuries ahead of an old front match. Larson through the middle, San Bernardi's header. Now John O'Neill, his experience, his composure is so important to Hibs. Steve Guppy and Gary Smith gets it clear, but straight at Neil Lennon. And I think Celtic thinking about another substitution check. Yeah, Martin O'Neill's just said a word with Sean Maloney, told him to get a warm-up, you would imagine the change might be for Fernandez, but my guess works hot. <laughs> Certainly doesn't need a self-publicist anyway. I would think Martin may do something completely different, maybe drop Fernandez in the middle of the park and take one of the, the three midfield players off, just to give them that extra attacking edge. Tansley. Good cut out by Uli Larsson. That was intended from McManus. Fernandez. Good challenge. Terrific stuff from Gary Smith to stop Fernandez. And now Hibbs with O'Neill. And a poor pass. Not what Townsley wanted, not what Hibbs wanted. Chance to counter attack. Again, Gary Smith doing some lion hearted defending, and the Hibs bench were furious there because uh, they reckoned that O'Neill was caught late by Lennon. And uh, Bobby Williamson is being calmed down by the fourth official. Valde shot blocked by this. Lambert, Petrov, here's John Hartson, no 
penalty. That goes down as a great challenge again from Gary Smith, who in the last five minutes or so has uh, kept Celtic out almost single-handed. Back from Fennec to Colgan. Standing room only on the Celtic bench as Sean Maloney gets on his working togs. Well, Bobby Williamson uh, was reaching just a couple of minutes ago at this. Neil Lennon's been involved once or twice already. Uh, there's, I don't see an awful lot in that, they're just brushing off each other as much as anything else. I don't think John O'Neill will complain too much. And Sonny Clark said that with a straight face as well, that was the amazing thing. <laughs> So uh, Fernandez off and uh, Sean Maloney on. Hasn't started a match all season, hasn't started a league game all season. Permanent fixture on the subs bench, but he has got the goal touch. Martin O'Neill hopes he has tonight. Celtic need one. They'll be looking for a, a goal from uh, Maloney, a spark as much as anything else up front. Check out what spot on. Beat me that time, Jack. Well Not a phrase you often hear. Onside John Hartson. And blows the chance. And Stillian Petrov alongside him, absolutely furious. It's a real chance, the Hibs defence probably caught out for the first time tonight. Hearts is on taking a flash, unfortunately couldn't keep going. Tried to lob Nick Colgan, but Miles off target. Hibs are going to make a double switch shortly, and I think it's Brebner and Jack, the two players, who will come on. Hibs have put an awful lot of effort into this, and uh, some of the legs are tiring. And Bobby Williamson wants to freshen it up with Grant Brebner and Matthias Jack. I'm interested to see who comes off here, Rob. The three in the midfield have played well tonight, worked very hard. If anything, it can only be for tired legs. Hartson for Silla. Maloney up ahead of him. And good challenge from Smith, which ensured the pass went astray. Picked up by Orman. Offside was McManus. Nearly 72 minutes gone at Easter Road. And still these two can't be separated. Is Celtic's title charge about to be derailed? Almost Sila probing at the Hibs defence, but that's no great threat to Gary Smith. Jakovic and Ian Murray are going to be the two Hibs players to give way, and uh, I think in Murray's case certainly he's carrying an injury, and uh, that would explain why he's not going to see it the 90 minutes. He has been superb for Hibs. And uh, that's uh, an offside, as I remind you of the man of the match. Telephone number 0900 10 200 25. Well, Ian Murray heads off before the 90 minutes is completed, but uh, could he still be a contender? I wonder for the, the top award tonight. He certainly played very well, as have all the Hibs players. The two lads coming on, they've got a high standard to play to tonight. Grant Brender, Matthias, Jack, both. Decent footballers, both disciplined in the middle of the park. They'll have to make sure they switch on really early, not to be overcome in the middle in the last part of the match. Celtic are set to make another switch as well, and I think it's going to be Jackie McNamara who comes on. So it's like a revolving door over in that technical area at the moment. Chicks keeping tabs and everything, so we'll be fine. Ish. Baldi for Maloney, Smith's there, now Silla. And uh, another offside flag stops any excitement for the Celtic supporters. 
And uh, Jackie McNamara, we hear, will replace Momo Silla. Time running out for Celtic. It is. You know, you give Hibs credit, they've, they've caught Celtic offside again there. Well, the, the runs from the Celtic players might not be great. Give the Hibs defence, you know, enormous credit for holding the line. Grant Brevner, terrific ball into the area. Larison got there before it reached McManus. To Neil. All the away, not too convincingly. What was that from Derek Townsley? Neil Lennon. Ulrich Larson. The angled ball for Maloney. Loses out to Zan Bernardi. of tiredness about the play of Tangsley at the moment as well. Well, Celtic wanting to make their change, but not yet. Maybe now. Mike McCarty stops the game so that uh, Momo Silak can troop off. Celtic will want to get on with it. Jackie McNamara is the replacement. Never a first choice for Martin O'Neill, but uh, when he comes into the play, he hasn't let his manager down, that's for sure, and uh, part of the Scotland squad as well. Chick. It's been a long time coming for these Celtic fans. Finally, they're ahead. It's a good run from Stallion Pedro. John Hartson holding the ball up very well. Pedro, for the first time, has got away from his midfield marker. Those will Yar Yarko pieces off the partner. He was marking them earlier, but this is a great finish. Don't take anything away from Pedro. Don't panic. Know where you're putting the ball. Get it on target. Make it hard for the goalkeeper. And that's a fine finish. A seventh goal of the season for Stylian Petrov, and that's an important one. It's not a match in which Celtic have been firing on all cylinders by any manner of means. But that might just be the goal that wins the game. During the goal celebrations, Momo Sila did go off, Jackie McNamara did come on. And I wonder, did that hip substitution have a, an influence on the goal in that uh, Petrov escaped his marker? Well, you wonder about that. We said about the, the two players coming on, Matthias Jack and Grant Brenner, they had to switch on right away, and you just wonder if they were sleeping a little bit. But Petrov certainly is very good at getting forward. They hadn't been allowed to get forward all night, and suddenly he gets there, and it's a great finish. Can Hibs respond? They've put an awful lot into this game. They've been impressive, but now they're behind. Maloney has support from McNamara. Cleared by Paul Fennick. Lambert to Valharan. Relief for Martin O'Neill, although he won't feel completely happy until either a second goal has gone in for Celtic or the final whistle's gone. It's been a match of few goal-scoring chances, really. It has, you know, and you worry about Hibs at the moment. They really haven't created much for a long time. I'm just looking at the system now. John O'Neill's actually playing up front. It's aid to Paul McManus to try and give them that just that little bit more impetus. Well, look what the goal has done to Celtic. Got the better of Craig James. 
And it's uh, the first of uh, a Celtic hat-trick on BBC Scotland. Easter Road tonight, Ibrox on Saturday lunchtime. 12.10 we're on air, 12.30 kick-off. And then we're with Celtic again. Uh, a week tomorrow in Spain for the second leg of their UEFA Cup third round tie against Celta Vigo. 1-0 up from the first leg. And you'll see the decider live on the BBC. McMara was yellow carded for this. It's just a late tackle, Zamanardi easily getting the ball and Jackie. It's a couple of seconds late. No excuse for that one. Well, at least he's made an impact on the game. But it's the sign of a, a champion team when you're playing nowhere near your best, but uh, you go on to win the game, which is what Celtic look like doing now. Well, you would expect that. They're uh, a bit interested just to see how they play now. They can afford to relax. Young Craig James getting a word of uh, advice from Mike McCurry. For the Celtic team now, you'll find they'll pass the ball about. They don't have to chase the game, and it'll be a different type of football they'll play, and they'll try and catch him to the break. John Hart's on the target. Lead off for Jackie McNamara. And out. Well, it must be hard for Hibs to take because uh, they've put in an awful lot and at the moment they're getting out zilch. Well, the fact that uh, Nick Colgan really has a, has had an easy night, he's not had much to do at all, shows how little uh, chances that, that Celtic have created. But it only takes one goal to win a game, and it's a special goal from Stalin Petrov. John O'Neill, good pass to Derek Tansley. Got the ball caught under his feet for a moment, but gets it away to Grant Brebner and back. Now with James, really have great control over where that pass went. Sean Maloney takes a tumble under the challenge of Paul Fennick. The pace of Maloney managed to win the free kick there, it was a 50-50 ball, but he got there first, forcing Fennec in to push him in the, in the back almost, giving away the free kick. Paul Lambert with the free kick, Zan Bernardi guides it back to Colgan. And just eight and a half minutes, plus stoppage time if Hibbs wants to go in search of an equaliser. Sometimes it's nights like these that championship winning teams look back on and think, well, we lived dangerously, but we came through. It was always going to be a hard game, I and mean, when you look at the start of the match, when uh, Henrik Larsson, your talisman, he's not playing, and Chris Sutton's also out, you always, always worried about them getting goals. Could they get goals tonight? The strikers haven't managed to get there, but good resilience, good perseverance as much as anything else. It means the Celtic have got in front when we go from Petrov. Celtic have a free kick and Bobby Williamson can't believe it. Gobsmacked, I think, is the phrase. They'll be disappointed. Uh, I don't know if there's too much in that. Jack's certainly very aggressive going for the ball. Petrov, I'm not sure if he's looking for the free kick, but he certainly won the ball. Matthias Jack always gives it his all. And uh, he was certainly physical there, but I'm not sure that that was a free kick. But when you try to analyse the scoreline and uh, as we look towards what the result might be, still in Petrov grounded at the moment, but uh, he certainly wasn't grounded there as he sped through the, the middle of the Hibs defence, set up by Hartson, and there's a calm, composed, controlled finish for his seventh goal of the season. And uh, you just wonder, Sandy, what sort of psychological influence this might have on Celtic, because it looked as if Rangers might retake top spot in the league, suddenly Celtic keep pole position, it appears, unless there's to be uh, a Hibs comeback. Yeah, t uh, ten minutes ago you thought that tomorrow morning you'd read the newspaper, Rangers top of the league, but, you know, you give Celtic credit. They haven't looked like losing a goal, to be honest, with his second half, and that man Petrov, he, he's so good at getting beyond strikers from the middle of the park, and Bob will be, will be disappointed they have lost a goal from him after doing so well for so long. The overhead kick from Alan Orman is out. And that's the thing about Petrov, we see him week in, week out, you know what he does, you know he makes these runs and gets ahead of the strikers, but uh, 
You have to pick him up, and that's what Hibbs failed to do. Well, only takes one chance, doesn't it? One opportunity. It really, we haven't seen much of him at all tonight. But when it really counts, that's what quality and class is all about. There's no doubt he's got that in abundance. He does it so often for Celtic, and that's a, that will be a massive bonus for him if that's the winning goal tonight. Valdez headed away to Hartson. 12,040 inside Easter Road tonight. And uh, most of them not happy with that decision. Well, I've got to agree with uh, the head supporters there. Paul Lambert got himself in a lot of trouble unnecessarily there. And good play from Townsley and John O'Neill crowding them out. If anything, that's a free kick for Hibs for me. Paul Lambert, a lucky man that time. John O'Neill agrees with me, I think. <laughs> and not, not quite using the same terminology, I don't <laughs> think. And... Uh, He's not best happy with the refereeing either. And he's not been a big fan of referees lately. Sam Bernardi lofting it downfield. Derek Townsley trying to get there. And that's almost in with us from uh, Bobo Baldi. It's good defending from Baldi at the end of the day, it's not the best of balls, but when you're winning 1-0 in the last five minutes of a match, Rose Ed, you can't score from there, tend to regroup now. And Eric, uh, Bobo Baldi's played well tonight from that angle. Petrov just leathers that downfield. It's that stage of the game, Celtic are ahead and they'll settle for any sort of winning scoreline just four minutes left plus any stoppage time to be added free kick given against O'Neill but for me John O'Neill John O'Neill's been tremendous tonight he's, he's worked hard that's all the Hibs players have, he's a captain of Hibs now. I certainly, uh, years ago, I've known him for a long, long time, I wouldn't have thought him as being captain material, but he certainly, the way he plays the game, he certainly leads a big example out there. Apart from working hard, he's an excellent footballer. Here's Maloney, and Hartson. Is it a second for Celtic? Certainly should have been. It's a great chance from Celtic. John Harson three down the left hand side. Intelligent ball and has a look. Sees Lambert and Petrov there. I think if Paul Lambert had actually missed that, it would have been a tap in for Stan Petrov. But Lambert's got to attack it in there. It's a lot of unfortunate. Just a, a yard or so in front of him. Yeah, should have scored Paul Lambert. But credit here to Craig James. Look at the challenge from James on the Celtic skipper. And that certainly made a difference. There have been quite a few successes in this hip side tonight and uh, I'm sure that Bobby Williamson will be very happy with uh, the way his team's played his team's played very well tonight, they've, they've defended exceptionally well, Sam Bernardi Fennick at the back, but the top man for me tonight defensive wise has been Gary Smith he's been outstanding, Celtic have hardly created any chances any loose balls inside the box, that man there Gary Smith has managed to tidy everything up you see, he's raging and losing the match, but he's playing exceptionally well. I think he can be happy with his own personal performance tonight. Hibbs making a change, and it's 22 uh, year old Alan Reid who uh, replaces Alan Orman. Brebner and James that's from McManus terrific run from Tom McManus Matthias Jack in from Craig James and what a chance for Tom McManus 
this. He can't believe that he didn't square the game. It's a real opportunity, working hard inside the balls. But Craig James, a great delivery, left foot, good pace in the ball. McMahon is getting in between the two central defenders, first of the ball. And when he sees that, he'll be disappointed. He's got underneath it. He could have been over the top of it easily, getting it on target. He's been learning his craft alongside Mixu Patalainen in this season, and you just can't help thinking that if the big man had been there, that would have been buried. It would have been, but McManus has played well tonight, very unfortunate there, not to go on the score sheet. Terrific ball in from uh, Craig James. 30 seconds left here, plus three minutes of time added, and as you've probably seen on screen, Livingston have pulled three goals back for three Rangers. Sean Maloney's shot held by Nick Colgan, so it's an amazing game at Ibrox, and uh, you'll see the goals later. Rangers having been four up, now 4-3. And uh, it could be a tight finish at Ibrox. And Hibbs had a real chance here to make it 1-1. Stoppage time at Ibrox, stoppage time here at Easter Road. The best part of three minutes to play. Gary Smith's free kick, Hibbs chasing an equaliser. Celtic countering with Petrov. Lambert wants it. And if that had been an early ball, Paul Lambert might just have been in. And uh, Celtic really didn't make the most of that breaking opportunity at all. It's a real chance for them going forward. Hibbs pushing almost everyone inside the box for the free kick. Petrov should have passed it earlier. Lambert was in his right, Malone in his left, couldn't make his mind up where to go. Delayed too long. Smith into the penalty box. Balde there. Lambert there. Petrov there. At the moment, Celtic just happy to get the ball away from the danger area. Hibbs desperately wants it back there. Here's Townsley. O'Neill. Zambernardi. That might work out for Derek Townsley. And for Brebner, Brebner and Craig James both went for it, neither got it, and uh, just 90 seconds remaining. It's a decent ball into the box here from Derek Townsley, Grant Brebner and Craig James, probably both going for the same ball, James probably in a better position there, didn't really call for it, didn't really attack it, wasn't decisive enough, because of that, no gun really got, got on the end of it. Just 20, Craig James, and hoping to do a, a Gary Caldwell, who was here on loan last season from Newcastle, James from Sunderland. And uh, just think of the impact Gary Caldwell made in his time here. Long ball from Zambernardi to Townsley. Larrison headed it away, the former Hibs man. Hartson's layoff for Lennon. Neil Lennon didn't fancy that challenge. From Yannick Zambernardi, one little bit. Then Zambernardi's brave here, he goes for the ball, no question, he wins the ball. Again, there's no way that's a free kick, Mike McCurry's read that wrong. Zambernardi, nice and clean, got to the ball first, and was always going to win it. That's a situation where the furious reaction wins the free kick. <laughs> right in front of the Hibs crowd, they're certainly not happy with him. Here's Hartson to Valharan. Interception by James. Finds O'Neill. Now Townsley. It's almost over at Easter Road. Last chance to get the ball into the box from John O'Neill. Out comes Rob Douglas. Good take. And that should surely see it out for Celtic. It's a good save from Big Rab. John O'Neill getting the ball into the box here as the final whistle goes. but. Big Rav, goal in command inside the box. Well, no one's jumping around for Celtic, but everyone is absolutely delighted with that result because Celtic were a long way short of top four. Martin O'Neill will know that, and he will know as well that that might just prove to be a vital goal from Stilian Petrov. 
15 minutes from time. Gary Smith was outstanding, as were the Hibs defence en masse. But uh, finally, they were breached by Petrov's goal, doing what he does so well, set up by Hartson, losing his marker, getting beyond the strikers, and one-on-one -on -one with Nick Colgan. Your money was always on the Bulgarian to tuck the ball in. And the Hibs fans disappointed because their team did them proud with a sterling performance. But in the end, they get out and it's Celtic who stay top of the league. Here's the man of the match. There's a lot of positives in that, in that performance for Hibs, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, we do all right against Old Firm at home. And we gave a good account for, of ourselves uh, turning it again. There must have been a long time during that game that you thought you were going to get at least a draw out of it. Yeah, uh, we know how, how good Celtic are, though, so we knew we had to be on our toes. And unfortunately, uh, Petrov got away again and scored a good goal for him. Do you think it was, you know, the, the goal came immediately after the double substitution? Do you think maybe people hadn't settled in the positions? Maybe, maybe. I haven't spoken to the boys, so I don't know, but it does take a while to get up with the pace of the game and that when you first come on. Despite the good performance, I think we both know Bobby Williamson well enough to, to realise he won't be smiling in the dressing room. No, none of us will. Um, we thought we were capable of taking something out of the game tonight and yet again we've come away pointless. What is it? What, what, is, what is needed to be the next step to, you know, to, to try closing the gap in over, over 90 minutes? Um, we've just, like we did tonight, we've just got to uh, press them and uh, try and put them out of their stride sort of thing, but we were missing a few boys tonight as well, so... That would have helped. Great personal performance tonight. You've been named man of the match. I mean, Gary Butler of Bank Scotland Champagne for you. Yes. Cheers, pal. Thanks, sir. Yes, a bottle of champagne, but he's not a happy man at all. Hibs uh, nil, Celtic one. Let's see how that all happened tonight with the story of the match. Murdo, it was, it was Hibs that actually started probably the better of the two. There uh, were no chances in the full first half on target by Celtic, but uh, Derek Townsley got a header cleared off the line early on. Yeah, he just felt that was the opportunity for Hibs. There was a great header, front post, he just flicked it on. Goalkeeper beating by Alan Thompson, where he should be on the line and knocked the ball away. And this is the point in the match that uh, we thought Rab Douglas maybe should have been booked. Paul. May have, um, but obviously the referee uh, elected not to. But for me, I mean, we've obviously got the benefit uh, of the replay. We've seen it, I, and I just wondered. It's a tough decision. I wonder the linesman on that side, maybe his uh, position may have altered the situation. But uh, I mean, thereafter, I thought Hibs they raised the tempo of their game. They're always very competitive, and this was a terrific ball into the danger area for me. It was a good ball but uh, not enough support, and I think that's probably one of the, the criticisms I've got to say. Hibbs never got enough men forward into the box. Yeah, and again, this is Alan Thompson, free, you know, from free kick, but still not hitting the target, Celtic. Well, I think uh, maybe just hit the target once in the 90 minutes, but it was the, the time it counted. But Tam McManus caused all sorts of problems there, but again, this highlighted the problem. There's Celtic getting three players back to defend against them, but they had no one at all in the middle to play with, and that was a the problem. There's no support coming yeah. from midfield to going back up the two strikers. Makes the back line clearly missing. But here, Rob Douglas has played, he's been playing brilliant since the last old firm game. Whoops. Just a little lapse in concentration <laughs> yeah. there, isn't it, you know? But, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, you've got to turn and say he has been outstanding as of late, and uh, you know, obviously, you got away with that. John Hartson, uh, I mean, normally so powerful in front of the goal, and a couple of chances tonight didn't do too well. Yeah, I mean, in the second half, I got one or two chances by his own standards. For me, he should have took that early. Um, I mean, here for me, he just should take an extra cross, go across the defender, but he elects to hit it early, and, and unfortunately, a player of his quality, I'd expect John to hit the target. But this is good play, tremendous for a run by Petrov, times it to perfection. That was the difference between the two sides. Hibbs didn't have that type of player yeah. to break from midfield, get forward and beyond. Petrov does it spectacularly, and it was a real composed finish, and, and Celtic, like a uh, all quality size of Guarin grinded out a result there. Yeah, we, we, well, exactly. I think, I think Hibs will be very disappointed. They've defended very well throughout the game, and I think when they were making the changes, there's a midfield runner, Petrov, getting from there, supporting John Hartson beyond the strikers and putting the ball in the net. Now, this but is he, a chance that Hibs yeah, had right there at the match. Was Great ball in from Craig James there, wonderful height there, but Tam McManus just get too much of the header onto it because he's in front of the defenders, he's just looking for a wee flick by Robert Douglas, but again, a very tough match and a good performance from Hibs. Look at that, Celtic, two shots on target all night, one of them a goal, a real grinding performance for them, and Hibs, you can understand why Gary Smith was disappointed there. Yeah, but I, I think uh, tomorrow when they look back in the, the performance, I think that's where they'll, they'll take a great deal of heart from the performance, mm. the attitude of the team, and they must feel if they can play like that every week, they can go and push for the third spot. Okay.
Well, we'll look back and talk to some of the managers later on. But here's a match that uh, might surprise you tonight. Before tonight, Motherwell Football Club had only scored 17 goals all season. They've smashed that tonight. Have a listen to this. Four of those goals coming for Motherwell in the first half. Pearson started them in 15 minutes, turning in the penalty area to drill the ball behind Roddy McKenzie. Three minutes later, James McFadden drilled in the second from the penalty spot, and then it was McFadden who also got the third, picking up a pass from Pearson and driving the ball with the right foot into the right-hand corner. Derek Adams got the fourth goal of the first half, all those goals coming in a 21-minute period with a diving header. The second half was only a couple of minutes old when Hart scored a goal back, Andy getting on the end of a Valois free kick to head behind De Bordeaux, but then Golson, Corrigan and Ferguson sealed off a tremendous victory for Motherwell. Motherwell 6, Hearts 1. An incredible result there for Motherwell. Could this be the turnaround in their season? They're still going to be bottom of the league, but that puts a bit of pressure on Dundee United at the bottom. And talking about Dundee United, they were playing tonight at Dunfermline Athletic. Dunfermline third in the league uh, before tonight. Here's the, score, the story of the half. Started the match indeed from Ken McRobb. Well, I think the 4-1 scoreline says it all, although it was a fight back in the second half by Dundee United, but not before Dunfermline had effectively wrapped up the points with a scintillating first 45 minutes. Craig Brewster started it all in the fourth minute, uh, converting a Nicholson cross on the right. He made it 2-0 after 36, after Walker had been taken down by Jim Lachlan inside the penalty box. Brewster, Brewster stepped up to take the kick and expertly taken at that for his 10th goal of the season. It was 3-0 after 40 minutes, this time Scott Walker with a header at the back post from a free kick delivered in from the right. And Dunfermline certainly cruising at the interval. The big question mark was how many more goals were going to go in. Well, Dunfermline didn't disappoint to begin with at least because after 53 minutes, um, Barry Nicholson made it 4-0 with a shot deflected past Gallica. At that stage, Dunfermline were threatening to run right, but they took the foot off the gas and that allowed Dundee United back into the match. And uh, to give them some credit for the game, they certainly did have a go at Dunfermline. They got one goal that came after 61 minutes and it was well taken by Jim McIntyre, cracking in from 12 yards uh, past uh, Derek Stilley. But unfortunately, they just couldn't convert any more opportunities. They did create them, they couldn't finish them. And Dunfermline certainly finishing well worthy of the three points and a scoreline, which I think probably just about did them credit. Dunfermline four, Dundee United one. And Dunfermline now the only team outside the old firm with a positive goal difference in the league. Score at Easter Road tonight was Hibs nil, Celtic one. The Celtic manager Martin O'Neill is with Chick Young now. Martin, sometimes when you're defending a championship, you have to grind out results. I suggest uh, that's exactly what happened tonight. That was a hard game for us tonight. I knew it would be before the game, or, and um, it was it was very difficult. I'm absolutely delighted delighted with the application of the team, and uh, and as you say, sometimes you have to work like Billy O to get a result, and we certainly did that. One goal did it. Uh, great goal it was from Stephen Burgess. I think we can have a look at it, but he always makes these times these runs perfectly, doesn't he? Yeah, well, I mean uh, there weren't that many chances created tonight. You know, John was a wee bit disappointed. He might have done better himself earlier. He's laid a brilliant ball through. And Stan has taken it brilliantly. I'm absolutely delighted for him, obviously, but I'm delighted for the football club that we've won. And I guess the things you want to do now is check whether uh, Messrs uh, Sutton and uh, Larson are fit for the Old Firm game. Yeah, not only those two, but there are a number of people in the in the dressing room, um, you know, uh, with plenty of knocks and things like that. So we'll have a look again. But it's been a big programme for us now in uh, in recent weeks, and of course, two massive games coming up, obviously. But uh, can't look any further forward now than uh, Saturday. Thanks, Martin. Pleasure. Yes, a really grinded out result, but a result just the same. Now up to Dundee now. Dundee were